There's nothing wild about your life, Ashley. Tell me, are you one of those non-binary folks I've seen on Tumblr? Don't you miss those days where there used to be two genders and not a third gender to sound like some sort of special little snowflake? In this video, I want to talk about gender as a social construct. Gender is not a social construct. You're either born male or female. That's the truth. And it's backed up with science. So. Are you going to argue with science now? Of course you are. You're one of those people who yell out SCIENCE is evil and stuff. Hey SCIENCE! What it means to be a man and what it means to be a woman involves more than just biological sex. In particular, the way that we communicate to others that we are a man or are a woman or are any other gender is through performance and through gender roles. Okay, but what gender roles would a gender neutral person have? Look, there's going to be men acting feminine and girls acting masculine. But at the end of the day, there are still men and women. So what certain tasks might make someone look more masculine or feminine doesn't mean they are disgender. A gender role is everything that a person says and does to indicate to others or to themselves that they are a man or a woman or androgynous or to indicate that they don't have gender. Again, I would like to know what gender roles would someone who exists outside the binary gender would have. Because, like I stated before, these so-called gender roles do not always indicate the person's gender. A man could be a stay-at-home dad, or the mom could be a professional doctor. If a man wears a dress, is he automatically a woman? No. And sure, you can fool people with makeup and a wig, and if you have a feminine body, you can fool people into thinking you're a woman. But under that skirt is a penis. Nothing more, nothing less. Some of the ways this manifests in our society are in these idioms that we have, like women are the weaker sex and they need to be protected. I love that straw man you just pull out of your non-binary ass. Women are typically the weaker sex because of their bodies are not built to be as powerful as that of men, but it can overcome with some training and some exercise. However, the world's strongest man will still be stronger than the world's strongest woman. It is not a social construct because it's backed up with science. And just because you decide to be not part of the gender binary doesn't mean you're going to grow muscles and shit. I could beat the living hell out of you with my pinky finger, and I don't work out as often as, say, Hulk Hogan, but I can lift at least 60 to 80 pounds. And big boys don't cry. Again, another straw man. I'm fully aware that men can cry and so can women. But if you're gonna cry for nothing, then you're nothing more than a mere big baby. These are examples of how gender roles are reinforced. In Western culture, a man is someone who is a protector and a provider, and a woman is someone who is a nurturer and a caregiver. Well, that's true in most cases, but there is always gonna be room for exceptions due to certain things like, for example, going through a divorce, or having one of the parents pass away. Therefore, the mother may end up doing both the father and the mother roles, and vice versa. So yes, there's always room for exceptions, sure. But for the mass majority, it's pretty much true. And when you violate those gender roles in our society, you're probably going to receive some pushback. Citation, please. My argument is that the pushback isn't necessary. There's kind of this misinformation that gender is something that is included in human nature, that it's universal across our species, and that based on the fact it's universal, it should be able to be enforced. But how could it be universal when cultures across the world have different gender systems? Um, how many cultures out there see gender outside of the gender binary? For example, in India, there's effectively a binary system consisting of men and women, but there's a third gender called the Hedra that's been recognized in India since the 8th century. But it's never been under the law viewed as a third gender until recently 2014. It doesn't really sound like Western culture's interpretation of gender. 
In fact, it sounds like it doesn't fit into any culture at all. Almost as if other cultures don't give a shit about creating a third gender. Another example is that some Native American cultures recognize two-spirit individuals. And it has a special significance to those cultures that I won't speak to because it's not my experience. But it's not a bad thing in those cultures to be a two-spirit person. But it's a belief system at the end of the day. It's nothing that is backed up with facts. It's just something that is just made up. Sort of like a religion. There are also people in Chile who believe that in order to do certain tasks, you need to channel a certain gender. And that's their belief about the way gender operates. So lots of other cultures around the world have space in their interpretation of gender for gender variance. I have many doubts that a lot of cultures have different interpretations of gender. But at the end of the day, you can't just make up a gender and spit it in the faces of years of studies. At the end of the day, it's just a belief system no different than a religion. Are you really going to value feelings over facts? If gender was universal, if it was something inherent, if it was something that all people were born with an understanding of, then we would expect to see it universally across cultures. But for most people, it is. The only people who see it differently are either those who are in, in these cultures who see more than two genders, or people like yourself on Tumblr creating new genders almost every day. I've made a video about these Tumblr genders and I came across a lot of these genders. For example, there's a gender based off mental diseases such as PTSD and depression. There's also genders that are based on nature itself such as plant life and rocks. These people are reducing gender to a mere percentage, something that could be divided now. You are a part of less than 1%. And that doesn't mean that your argument is solid, especially since we don't see animals like bears and sea lions creating up genders or trying to become gender fluid. But we do see gay animals, so you're wrong no matter what you say. And since we don't see it universally across cultures, that means that it can't be universal. And instead, that it's culturally constructed from culture to culture. And when you can understand gender as a social construct, it's a lot easier to understand how our culture can be oppressive to people who experience gender differently than man or woman. Yes, we call people like yourself special little snowflakes. Because man and woman are words that we invented as a culture to describe certain phenomena. Wrong again. Men and women have not created just because society just said so. You see, in the world of science, which is universally true around the world, that men and women have the exact same chromosomes as they are born. Sure, there are mutations, but those are very rare and they don't count. They don't represent the entire human species. Again, are you going to argue against science now? And they don't describe all of the possible options. So when one of those doesn't fit you, it's not because you're weird. Oh, no, 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 no. You're declaring that gender is just something that you could just put on like a piece of clothing. Doesn't make you weird at all. It's because socially we've constructed a system that doesn't work. A system that doesn't describe the experiences of all of the people in our culture. You are part of a culture that barely even exists. Me thinks you're just doing this for attention. So I challenge you to do more research, read more, and learn more about the perspective of gender as culturally constructed. Okay, I challenge you to prove me wrong. Because so far all you've shown is that gender is nothing more than a mere accessory that you could just put on. Because I think it's really the foundation before you delve any deeper into the conversation about gender or gender equality. I thought you were going to have a dis discussion with me because we all know how social justice warriors and Tumblr rights act. To you, I'm just another bigot who is against change. I hope you can understand why the interpretation of gender as something we are inherently born with is mythical. Question. Is oxygen mythical? Is gravity mythical? Because us humans have to create words for it. How about the human species in general? We have people who feel like they were born originally as wolves or dragon. So is being human just another social construct as well? Because after all, we have people like Otherkin, Ageokin, Devilkin, Terrian, hell, even Characterkin. By your own logic, the human species as a whole is just a social construct. And the social and cultural construction of gender is very real. 
Thank you all for watching. Bye-bye. Therefore, what determines of what you are is up to you because human nature is a social construct. And I expect a video response in return, but I'm not holding my breath. I am the Atheist Gamer. Peace the game out.